share with you real quick before we begin. If this is your first time to High Country Cowboy Church, we want you to know what a blessing we, we you are to us to have you here. And uh, I know over the next couple of weeks, we still have a couple more weeks where we're kind of getting shifted around different places. And um, and that's okay. We'll, we, we'll be uh, next week at the pavilion. Again, it's out by the arena where we had the cowgirl up where we did the breakfast and whatnot for the cowgirl up that's where we'll be meeting next week uh and then the following week we're back here and then we're back to the fairgrounds like we normally would be couple things real quick this week we found out some really good news i mean every day we get good news right this week i had an interview i don't know if i mentioned that last week or not i might have mentioned it wednesday at round pin I had an interview Wednesday or uh, this week, last week, with a radio station out of Missoula. There's a new Christian uh, cowboy gospel radio station. It's actually 98.7 on the FM. And anyhow, they uh, they found out about us, and uh, they found out about us through the church in uh, Kokolala. And so anyhow, Miss Rose over there put them in touch with, with uh, me. We inter I interviewed with them last week, and they said, we want to start airing your sermons on the radio every Sunday. And so that's, that's going to... I'm going really, to have to watch what I say now. <laughs> nah. <laughs> And so he said, so we interviewed and he said, man, we're excited about your church. We're excited about what you're doing there. You know, everywhere we go, people are always wanting to know what this church is up to. You know what that's all about, right? That's about serving Jesus in a big way. Because yeah. this church isn't about me. It's not about you. It's only about Jesus Christ. And so as we serve him and we do the things that we do, it's about getting that message out. 
And so for that for that radio station, so we've been listening, Mark and I have been listening to us 90, I'm gonna say it again, 98.7 on the <laughs> FM. And um, so he said to me, he says, well, there's a slight fee involved. I said, I don't care if there's a big fee involved, we wanna do it. And so we're excited to be able to have our sermons or the service, the, I don't know if it, I don't know what the time restraints are there. So I know it'll play, it'll play the week behind. So whatever I preach today wouldn't play today. It would play next week because they've got to take it and edit it to fit their format. I, I don't really understand all that stuff. So maybe they can bleep out some stuff. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> maybe I need to get one of them bleeper buttons in the pocket. I don't, I don't care. I probably. So this week at our ranch rodeo, our, we have a ranch rodeo team, and uh, our team members are wearing We thought, man, we're gonna, if we're going to go, we're going to show big, right? And I said, man, win, lose, or draw, we're going to look good anyway. And uh, what our attitude is, we're not going to show up, we're going to win. Amen. But I know every team's got that attitude, but we, we know who we write for, right? Amen. And so our whole team will be sporting these nice white shirts, and we'll be looking real good until Miss Katrina, Miss Katrina mugs one down and her shirt gets guacamole all over it. But anyhow, it'll be good. Yeah, but ours is better because it has it on the back. Yours has the logo on the, because we wanted you to be seen from outer space. Well, right. <laughs> because, you know, here's another thing. Here's another thing about, you know, this week at the rodeo, which is going to be a crazy busy week. It's being broadcasted on the Cowboy Channel. And so we aren't just going to be like, you know, local rodeo people. We're going to be like, you know nationally recognized rodeo contestants <laughs> yeah at least for the day right yeah we can ride the short bus on monday but we're going to show out on friday that's for sure wednesday <clears throat> we also have our booth this week I, I don't know if we said a lot about it and um, this is an opportunity this week for us to truly get the brand for this church and the brand for Jesus out in a big way. And so I want to encourage everybody to, to find your spot and get involved wherever you can. And um, just just this morning, this shirt has already paid off in a big way. I had, I had a mark moment this morning. Yeah, I did. So I leave the house and for some reason I forgot to like lock the back gate on my horse trailer. And so I'm flying down the road, and the gates are just swinging out there. And there's nothing in the back, and the poor guy behind me thought I lost everything. And he's like, wait, 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 he's wait, like wait. flipping his lights on and, and blinking and, and trying to rub me over. I'm thinking, I'm just waving, you know, kind of like the fellow with the gas pump in his hose in his son's truck last week. And so I finally figured out, well, maybe there's, I got a flat tire or something. So I pull over. And he gets out of his truck and I walk back there and it was it was one of those classic moments. Because he looked at me, he looked at my shirt, read this side, read this side, and went, <laughs> He says, the gates of the back of your trailer are open and there's no livestock. I went, oh crap, I had like 15 cows in there. <laughs> I said, you didn't see them out there on the highway somewhere, did you? I go, I don't know where they're at. He goes, really? I've been hiding for a minute. I really got it. just must, must have fell out. It was awesome. Couldn't resist. Wait, wait, wait. How was that a Mark moment? I don't know. Let's be the <laughs> Today I want to talk about writing for the brand. You know, writing for the brand, there's a lot, there's a lot to be said about writing for the brand. And if you have or have been around livestock in any fashion, you understand what the brand on livestock is all about and what it's for. However, the brand, when we talk about writing for the brand, it's a lot broader, it's a lot, it's a lot more intense than just simply a mark on, on, on livestock. I want you to think for a minute, some of the 
some of the major biggest brands that we know of today. You'll see the Nike swoosh and you instantly know what that means, right? Because it doesn't say Nike on it. It's just some goober went whoosh and made a gazillion dollars, right? But when you see the Nike swoosh, you know what it is. How about when you see the golden arches of McDonald's? You see the golden arches. Yeah, that's all. And, and you know what it is. I saw a great one last week. This lady, bless her heart, she had her eyes like tattooed, and it looked like the golden arches of McDonald's. And I'm thinking, maybe she owns McDonald's or something. And I'm thinking, oh, dang. You gotta have to wear that a long time. I hope it was just like a pencil that you know, she didn't get enough coffee and she looked or something, <laughs> right? But her eyeballs looked like the golden arches of it. It was awesome. I go, oh man, that's great. I told Miss Karen, I said, please don't do that. <laughs> please get a cup of coffee before you try to put that pencil in your eyeball. So we all know what the golden arches mean. And when you see the cursive writing that says Coca-Cola, you know what that means, right? Coca-Cola. Means Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> like if you were smart. Like we must own Amazon in our house, cause like they're like every day, like knocking door. Hey, how are you? <laughs> but when you see their, I don't even remember what their, like a smiley face or something, isn't it? Uh, arrow. arrow. Well, see, didn't stick in my head. Just that box, cause I know it means money. <laughs> Lots of. Them. But when you see those kinds of brands, you instantly know what they are. How about the Yahoo thing, right? <laughs> you know my buddy Wiley Gefferson? Y'all know Wiley Gefferson? Anybody in here? Yes, of course. Of course we do. You'll get to meet him because when we do our Cowboy Christmas Ball, he'll be the first band that we bring because Wiley does an amazing job. And he's a good friend of mine, so it's easy to get him. But he, he is the voice of the Yahoo. Yahoo? That part. The Yodel. The Yahoo Yodel. All right, he did a Yahoo, right? And it built him a multi-million dollar indoor arena. I thought, dang, I gotta come up with something, right? <laughs> and so anyhow, we understand that. How about for us here in the Valley, you see the yellow, why? Why? And what do you think of? Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Huh? Yeah, oh, come on. Yeah. Quit being a short bus driver. <laughs> Here's one even better, closer to home. Well, not closer to home. When you see the 666 brand, what does that tell you? Huh? Four sixes. Did I skip one? Oh, that was bad. Oh, scratch it. That's why we need that TV button. The four six 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 six. That's Common Core math right there. When you see the four sixes, you instantly know that that's the big. Four Sixes Ranch in Texas, right? The Run and W. The Run and W. How about the Rafter 8C, huh? Oh, ah. well, yeah, now I'm telling you. And so, when people, when we. Our brand, and the more we get it out, the more that will become apparent. The brand out. So when we think about that, it goes a little deeper, it goes quite a bit deeper than just simply having a logo, a brand. So I don't know if I meant, maybe I already forgot. If you want one of these shirts, we're taking orders because the more people that wear the brand, the more people want to know about the brand. We're also going to do vests and other asunderous items. Stickers. stickers. We ordered a bunch of stickers for the back of your pickup truck window anyhow it's about getting that brand out so let's take it let's take it to a different level now what is it that sets us apart as a christian today you know there's a lot of people today that wear the name christian who really don't even understand what it is it's a term that is so loosely used and so loosely thrown out there 
that people don't really understand, but a brand means something. It's, it, it's more than just a way to identify. When we, in livestock, we brand our cattle. We brand our cattle so that we know that that cow or that calf, that's, that's mine. It says it's mine. It belongs to me. It belongs to that ranch. We register our brands. You know, we had to do that. It happened years ago because cattle were, were an open range and they would just run. And all and, and even today, many ranchers today will, will run cows together. And then it, when they gather, they have to build a sort by brand. There's still cattle wrestling going on today, just like it was back in the 1800s and so on. The Johnson County Wars and all that kind of stuff. badly altered today. Today, the term Christian and what it means to be a Christian is so watered down. It's so polluted. The truth is so watered down. It's so polluted. It's so... Today is the sin of offense. And mostly because people today, a lot of people today are simply offended by the truth because they don't really know the truth. And they don't really want the truth. They want the truth according to them, but not according to the Word of God. And we see that over and over and over and over again. So a brand not just identifies what it represents, but who it represents. Go with me, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. There's some really awesome stuff here that I want you to, under, to try to get a handle on and understand this morning. I want to share with you 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 14 through about 20. And here, Paul writing says this, For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, <laughs> but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him this way no longer. Therefore, if any man, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, new things have come. Now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, catch this verse, therefore, we are. It says that we are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. I don't know if you realize how deep that verse, those verses really are. But we have, we have been set apart. Christ died for all people, for all men, men, women, Jew, Gentile. Christ died for all of us. But he says that we have been set apart. And that's what he's saying here. He says the love of Christ <laughs> controls us. Verse 15. He died for all so that they who live might no longer live for themselves. Why? Because they've been branded. They've been branded with the brand of Jesus Christ. We aren't ourselves anymore. If you've accepted Jesus, if you've, if you've been obedient to Jesus and you've given your life to Jesus and you're serving Jesus, you're the only name you should be putting on yourself as a Christian, right? Amen. Because if you're putting any other name on there, you really haven't really sold out to Jesus yet. You've sold out by man's terminology because the biggest, one of the biggest problems that I see in the world today, especially in today's society, is division. And Jesus said, I don't want any division. God says, let there be no division among you. You realize that yeah. denominations and other churches is just a tool that Satan uses to divide us? If we're serving Jesus, what do we say? We are. We're a Christian. We wear the brand of Jesus on the show Yellowstone. There's a few of those guys on there that wear a brand, right? You know what? You know they like put the Yellowstone brand right on them. And those guys were are set up. If you've been following the show at all, whether you like it or dislike it, I don't really care. Just I need to make this point. Those men 
and a couple other ladies are owned by that ranch. And no matter what they do, that ranch has always got their back. Does it not? As a Christian, we wear the brand of Jesus Christ. And Jesus always has our back, even when we mess up. Amen. And we mess up, do we not? Mm -hmm. We mess up almost daily, some of us. I was really laughing when I put this shirt on. I thought, dang, I'm going to have to be a little more careful what I say now. <laughs> right? Because they go, Pastor, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> I saw nothing. <laughs> We wear the brand of Jesus. That sets us apart. So he goes on there. He goes on there and says, <clears throat> they died for, um, that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but live for him who died. Now look at verse 17. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what your past was. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you did last week. What, yeah, what matters, what matters is, that you have been sanctified, thank you. You have been sanctified, you have been set apart by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the brand of Christ. That's what it means to be branded. That's what it means to ride for the brand. Now, when you ride for the brand, you you are behind that brand a hundred percent. When you hire on for somebody and you and you're riding for their brand, you treat their brand as though it's your brand, right? It doesn't matter. You're gonna to fight to the death for the brand that you ride for. Wouldn't it be cool if we had that same concept with Christ? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be cool if we put that much that much effort into defending each other, into defending Jesus? You know, there's a really bad I'm gonna bring I'm working on it too. There's a sermon I'm working on called, I think I'm just gonna call it chatter. Because the world is full of chatter. The churches are full of chatter. Your workplace is full of chatter. It's not just it's not just here in Ravalli County. It's nationwide. People like to talk, do they not? And they like to take a little bit of truth and twist it around and make it a lot of not truth. I love walking into a like a like a a place where there's a bunch of people gathered around, like a bunch of men drinking coffee, or maybe a bunch of hens having whatever they're doing. I love walking in there, and every time I see it, I can't help myself. I do it every time. I do it laughing as I'm walking in. I walk up to him and I go, so, this is where rumor becomes fact. <laughs> and it's so true, right? Because you, if you've ever sat in on one of those little sessions, holy Moses, right? I can find out more about myself or you in five minutes in one of those little hen meetings, meetings or old feller meetings than you ever could have known about yourself. And that's just chatter. People want to chatter. We well, don't want to go to High Country Cowboy Church. That pastor up there, he's a real mm -mm -mm, right? Well, according to according to some people, you don't like women because you call us hands. That's true. And it's funny. It's not. A... I have been branded by the chatter crowd as a woman hater. I happen to love women. I married one. <laughs> yeah, let me bear so I can feel bad about myself. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard, right? I was also told I don't like kids. No, I just like disrespectful kids, right? And this time out and one, two, three nonsense. How about a boot in the rear end moment, huh? Right? How about pull the, you know how many boot belt loops are on a pair of Wranglers? Is that what I think? We need a few more kids need to hear that whoosh coming out of the Wrangler belt, right? Yeah, yeah how many of y'all how many of y'all heard that growing up? Yeah, buddy. I have heard my dad's belt come out of his belt loop so many times, it's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm just taking my beat and go on. But that's what's missing, right? Yes. That's part of what's missing. God's what's missing. Yeah. But we got it. people don't have respect. We have this whole Entitlement mentality blowy thing going on, right? That, that, that everybody should win a trophy. I think the only one should win a trophy is one to one. Yeah. Not the one that showed up. Uh, you know, through this COVID deal, you know, Satan uses this COVID deal to destroy the church. Division. It goes right back to division. Because now you can sit home in your jammies with your puppy dog slippers on. With a hot cup of coffee and a bowl of Cheetos and watch church. 
and never wants fellowship. You can't fellowship sitting on your couch. I'm sorry. Now, there are times when you, when you don't have a choice and, and you, and you want to follow along. That's different. But making a career out of sitting in your recliner on Sunday morning is not what God had in mind. Because God said, and he actually commanded us, he says, not to forsake the assembly of the saints together, period. He wants you to be here because your presence here might encourage somebody else that's here. And, and you, you will leave yourself having been more blessed than you think you will. How many times have you yeah. showed up to this church or any other event that you went to and you thought, oh, man, I just don't want to go. Well, I know you never felt that way about this church, right? Amen. <laughs> Come on. Because if you did, I'm going to park my rear end right next to you. I'm going to preach sitting next to you. Put my hand around you every once in a while. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> but we go through. How many of us tomorrow morning go, oh, it's Monday. i got to go to work. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why? Because we'd rather sit home in our jammies and drink coffee, right? Do you know going to work can be a great tool to serve Jesus? It'd be a great opportunity to share Jesus. And we got to have this attitude that, man, I ride for the brand. I, I, I'm all in. I'm all in for Jesus. So he says, he says uh, we're a new creation. So all the things in the past are gone. But I think the biggest part of what I read to you this morning happens in verse 20. Because in verse 20, Paul here says, this is what it means to ride for the brand. He says, therefore, we are. Now, he didn't say you might be. He didn't give you an option. He said, we are. We are means you're in, right? If you've accepted Jesus, you don't have an option to sit this one out. He says, we are ambassador, ambassadors for Christ. You understand what an ambassador is, right? That means you're a rep you represent Jesus Christ. You represent the kingdom. You're here on earth to promote the kingdom. Why? Because we live in a world full of darkness. Jesus said, you will become the light. He said, I am the light, but you also are the light. And so we, it's our role, our responsibility, our command to go out into all the world, right? Jesus gave that final command with the Great Commission in Mark 16 and Matthew 28 to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Why is that so important? Because Jesus said, I've, I've gone to prepare a place. I'm going to come back. Now, I told you, God said, I, I smote the world with water one day. And I sent you a rainbow, not the queer thing. I sent you a rainbow so that you would know that I will never destroy the, the earth again with water. But he said, I will destroy the earth again with fire. And so when Jesus said, go into all the world, it's, we got to try to save as many people as we can, right? Now, Paul said, I have become all things to all men that I might save a few. We aren't going to save the masses, right? Do we want to? Yeah. Absolutely. Do we want to have a gazillion people in service each week? Yes. Amen. But it's not about how big we are because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The text there says, fix your eyes on Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's what this church is all about. That's what the right for the brand is all about. It's all about Jesus. Period. Amen. And so if we're riding for the brand, we're ambassadors. We, 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 we've got something. An ambassador has something that they're trying to sell or promote to somebody else, right? We have ambassadors for the U.S. of A. in all the different countries. We have ambassadors for different products. They are there to promote what we have so that other people will want what we have. Ironically, they did a good job in Mexico because they all want to come here and they want to take from us. Not all, because I, I know a lot of really great people. And you have to live in Texas for a while to even understand what, what that meant coming out of me. I had no idea there was a border crisis until I went to Texas. I want you to know there's a border crisis in Texas. There's a border crisis in uh, northern Montana, too, at the Canadian border. Why? Because you can't have open border. Now, if y'all go, no, 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 I don't care if you agree with me or not. It's not up for vote. An open border is an open border which leaves room for evilness to come in, does it not? If we had open borders in our souls, guess what? Who guess who comes in? Yeah. Satan. We got to have some walls in our in our in our life too, do we not? Yeah. 
The wall is Jesus. The wall is his word. If we've got Jesus around us, if we're ambassadors, if, we, if we're new creations, we've got the blood of Jesus all around us. And guess who can't get in there? Unless you get up and open the door, let him in. He can't come in. Because in James chapter 1, it says, Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. And you're all sitting there thinking, Man, I don't know how joyful it will be if I'm broke. I don't know how joyful it would be if I've got a health issue. You know, I had a great praise this week. My wife thought I had cancer. I wasn't worried about it. Amen. Right here on my face. She says, you're going to lose your whole eyeball. Oh. <laughs> I, <did not. laughs> I said, well, then I just look better on the other one. I can still see that one. <laughs> and so she was all worried, and so she got me into this dermatologist, and that's a whole other gig right there. Right? You walk in. Stop. You know the doctor, dermatologist, skin people, right? And the lady looks, she says, I, I, I'm here to look at this. She turned a little freeze thing up there and tried to burn my eyeball out. But hey. <laughs> She says, oh, it's, it's not case. Good news, it's not cancer. And she goes, you got any other spots on you that I need to look at? I go, yeah, yeah right here I might have one. <laughs> you got to make them laugh, right? And so, you know, laughter is about the best medicine I know to serve Jesus because you know what that did? Put me to laugh for one. But it opened a door for us to talk a little bit about what's most important, writing for the brain. And so I found out this week is not cancer. I don't have cancer. You're not going to get rid of me that soon. Huh. How about that? But I wasn't worried about it because I even told Mark, I said, if it's cancer, I'm good. Because that just means I get to go home sooner, right? Yeah. And so I just don't worry about stuff like that. But I know I know, nat in the natural we do. We get concerned about, about things. I want you to know that when you're writing for the brand, you only got to be concerned about one thing. His name is Jesus. Because no matter what happens, no matter what comes in your life, Jesus is always there. God is always there. And so he says, he says that we are not an option. You are. You are an ambassador. You are to represent the brain. You are to represent Jesus. Now, people are watching this church. Good or bad, they're watching this church. There's a lot of people, or a fair amount of people, not a lot maybe, that are only looking to see what's wrong with this church. You understand that, right? And it's really not them. It's really not. It's Satan. It's the enemy. It's the enemy trying to tear down something that's really good. You see, Jesus doesn't want this church. I mean, that was wrong. Satan doesn't want this. I must have wrote a short bus. Satan does not want this church to be successful. Why? Because he knows that if we're successful, if we're truly ambassadors, if we're truly writing for the brand, we might encourage and help others to write for the brand, right? Amen. This week, we're going to be at the fair. We ordered, how many bottles did we get? Thousand? Forty cases. Well, that don't tell me nothing. Well, <laughs> That's a thousand. It's close. We have a thousand bottles of water that we are handing out in our booth amongst other things. And guess what's on that bottle of water? Brand. Our brand. Now you may find our brand and water bottles scattered hither and there all across the fairgrounds. But one thing's for sure. If we reach one person for Jesus because of those water bottles, mm -hmm. mission accomplished. Amen. That's only one place. We've got a really hot dog ranch rodeo team ready to roll Wednesday night. All wearing shirts like this one that say High Country Cowboy Church. If Miss Katrina cusses, it's okay. we'll, <laughs> we'll still love her. <laughs> it happens, right? Should we get all worked up about that? Absolutely not. Huh? We just ripped that bell down. Come here, sister. When we go in that rodeo, when we go in that rodeo Wednesday night, a couple of things are going to happen. 
there might be, there might not be, there's going to be a whole lot of people who might hear High Country Cowboy Church for the first time. And because of our, because of our involvement in, in that rodeo, we might also lead somebody to Jesus Christ as an ambassador. Our rodeo team is nothing more than ambassadors riding horses and mugging and milking and doing what we do. Amen. On Wednesday morning, we have, a, we have a float in the parade. Any of you that would like to be in the parade on Wednesday morning can join up and get on that trailer and ride through town with banners and signs and crosses. And Are we, are we throwing anything out there? You have to walk beside the trailer. You can't feed the kids with candy. Yeah, can't can't, can't hose them with water balloons. Nothing yeah. fun like that. It's not hard, y'all. It's work. But our presence in that in that parade is about being an ambassador for Jesus. You understand that, right? Yeah. Some of our people will be on horseback behind the trailer, and some of us. I'm I'm torn because I feel like I need to ride with because I'm a fair board commissioner. I feel like I need to ride with the fair commissioners, but I, I'm the, I want to ride with the church. And I know the fair commissioners, they go up front, so I'm hoping that I can ride in with them and then hook back, circle back. Maybe I can just bust through the crowd, you know, like <laughs> part the water. Cowboy Lake. Cowboy Lake, right upstream and get back. <laughs> either way, either way, we're there to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Amen. People are watching us. Jesus said to be ready in season and out of season. To always be ready to give an account of the hope that's in you. You understand how exciting that is? Mm -hmm. Because if you've got hope in you and you're riding for the brand and you're excited about the brand, guess what you cannot keep yourself from doing? Talking about it. Have you ever been around somebody that's really excited about what they believe in? Maybe maybe we're going into football season pretty quick because all the chatter is going to be about football teams and this thing and that thing, right? And they know that football. I know every player on the football team, right? And they know all these things about the football team, but they might not even know who Saul was in this Bible, who later became Paul, who wrote 13 books of our New Testament. You see the difference? When you're an ambassador, when you're excited, you can't, if you've ever been around that person, if you don't know what they believe in, in a very short order, you're going to know what they believe in, whether you want to or not. Because they're excited. They're excited to share what they have. Now, look what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. It says there that we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel and speak as to not please man, but God. We as ambassadors, we've been entrusted with this. God entrusted us with his gospel that we don't, we're not just out there trying to please men. You know how many churches today are out there pleasing men? I watched a, a little clip this morning about some televangelist. I don't remember his name. Doesn't really matter. And I don't think that goober even knew who Jesus was. But he sure knew how to sell water with a little package of salt. If you put the salt and the water, put it on your head, and put one by the ear and one over here, you, you, you'd be healed. And, 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 the, and the thing said he, he made $23 million this year. I'm in the wrong business. Dang. <laughs> I'm sure I could sell a cupcake or something, get some of that. You see, you can be an ambassador for good, and you can be an ambassador for bad. Do you understand that, right? Because the Bible says you're going to serve one of two masters. You're either going to serve Satan and his evil ways, or you're going to serve Jesus and his glorious ways. And so we have to be, we have to be, we have to be uh, aware of our situation and not allow our own interest to overpower those that are established for us by God as ambassadors. Because today, because we are ambassadors, people need to know that Jesus still, still heals. Jesus still heals a broken heart. Jesus still softens a hardened heart. 
And Jesus still opens the eyes and changes life. That's what Jesus still does. Some people think, well, this book was written 2,000 years ago. It doesn't apply to me today. And some people, they want to take this and think, well, I don't like that verse, tear it out. And I don't like that one. I'm going to write one, put it in there. We don't have that privilege. We don't get to pick and choose what we want. God said, this is what you get in its fullness. You don't, you don't get to pick this one. And Well, I like that verse because it says all I got to do is believe. If I don't like this one because oh, I might have to get wet. We don't get that option. Amen. Jesus said, you're either all in or all out. And I prefer to be all in because one day when Jesus comes back, I don't want to be out, right? Amen. I don't want to be like Noah and the ark and, and the water came. I don't want to be the third monkey standing on the ramp going, hey! <laughs> it's getting deep out here. I, I can't swim. I, I don't think that's going to be the issue when he comes back. We're going to go, hey, it's hot here. I've been in Montana for the last month. I've been in Arizona. I, I've been a lady from Arizona. Where's my, right here. My Arizona, and then I know other Arizona people. Who goes to Arizona in the summer? <laughs> oh, I know, but that's a whole different. I'm not going to Arizona in the summer. It's like 190 degrees, right? You could probably boil an egg, fry an egg on the hood of your car, right? Fried chicken while you're driving? I don't know. Hey, that might be all right. And the air fryer going. That's where it came from. Some dude was driving down the street and had a chicken sitting on his head, and the wind was so hot, it fried the fool thing. And he goes, dang, I'm going to create an air fryer, and I'm going to be a millionaire. Guess what? He is. I'm always missing out on the cool stuff. One day I'm going to get a break. I just know it. Go with me to Romans chapter 1. I'm sure, Mark, that's where that came from. In Romans chapter 1, I want to continue this thought of writing for the brand. In Romans chapter 1, I want to start with verse 1 because Paul here says about himself, he's talking about himself writing for the brand, which also relates to us writing for the brand. He says, Paul, the bondservant of Christ, Jesus called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Catch that. He's been set apart. You've been set apart. We've been set apart. Why? Because we write for the brand. We, when we write for the brand, we're separated from the world. Paul will also say that we're not to conform to this world, but be transformed, right? We live in this world where you've heard all the kids phrase all that we're just passing through. <laughs> Some of you may never get off this planet, right? We're passing through because we know that our home really isn't here. But while we're here, we're going to make the best of it, right? Who doesn't? God doesn't. You know, I hear people say, well, this is home's not my home. I'm just going to give up and lay down and, you know, do. No. God wants you to live a full life. God doesn't want you to live like you're beat up and distressed. You're going to be at times, but he wants you to live your life to its fullest, right? Because you can actually use the great things that God blesses you with to bless others, which does what? Helps you to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, right? God bless Karen and I with the house that we have. Is it the one I wanted? Absolutely not. It's the smallest place we've ever lived on. I have moved so many times that I can't move again. Because we started out with a thousand acre ranch and then it went down, down. Every time we moved, it got smaller. But the price got bigger. That's like going to McDonald's. You still pay more and you get a biscuit about that big. It's like, that's a hoardy or That ain't no hamburger. Come on. Every time we move, it gets smaller. And now we live on 18 acres. Now, a lot, some of you go, oh, 18 acres. Oh, I could have a cow and a chicken both on that one. <laughs> well, when you're, we don't now because we live on 18 acres. But when we had 300 plus cows and 60 plus horses, y'all thinking 60 plus? Yeah, we did. Huh? It's 19. Oh, well, excuse me. Add a quarter acre there. We could add on. <laughs> But you know what I've come to realize? Paul said to be content. That's a hard one for me sometimes. 
He says, I, Paul said, I've learned to be content. What I've had, what I've had not. I think for all of us, myself included mainly, is to learn to be content. Because the only there's really only one thing that we really need. His name is Jesus. Amen. And if you've got Jesus, you've got everything. Amen. Because everything else is just stuff. You all know my story. How I went from healthy to paralyzed and lost all my things. And then I got to travel around for a while and share my story with others. And the one thing that came up often was, man, you lost everything. You lost your wealth. You lost your health. You lost your ability to walk. Your handicap, your whatever. Yet you're still smiling. Yet you still seem happy. I said, I am. Because I learned a long, long time ago that all that stuff that I lost was simply that stuff. Amen. And yes, when the doctor said I would never walk again, I knew I would. Why? Because I know who I ride for. Amen. I know what brand I ride for. And so Paul says, he says here in Romans, he says, I've set, you've been set apart for the gospel of God. In verse 5, he says, to bring about the obedience of faith among the Gentiles. You've been set apart. Paul has been set apart. We have been set apart to share the gospel of Jesus to everyone. Paul will go on in verse 15. Chapter 1, verse 15, he says, Paul says, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone. That's what it is in a nutshell to ride for the brain. We are ashamed of the gospel. We are excited by the gospel. We are energized by the gospel, which means that's Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. And when you're writing for the brand, how can you not be excited about it? And when, I, I know one thing's for sure because I've lived this way my whole life. Y'all think I'm on drugs or something because I'm always, <laughs> right? I don't, I never, I don't even take aspirin. <laughs> She's trying to get me to take vitamins. I think she's trying to poison me. She says, you need a B12. What's it do? Gives you energy. I'll take four of those. <laughs> yeah, buddy, and four cups of coffee. Turn me loose. Woo. Right? I don't know where it's going. But what, no, that's where I got it. <laughs> enthusiasm breeds enthusiasm, does it not? Amen. I mean, some of you are here today because you just want to see what's crazy or stupid thing I might say. Right? <laughs> right? Is he going to slip up and talk bad about his wife? Oh, God, they're having marital troubles. I heard that one last week, too. Me, too. Are we getting divorced? Can that be a dog? <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? If you want to get hung up in all the... Chatter. Good word. That. <laughs> That's something else to mind. It can pull you down, can it not? Amen. But if you got Jesus leading the parade, you can't help but be excited, can you not? Amen. I know that you, those of you that are in the parade this week, and you're sitting on that, if you're sitting up there like this, I will ride over and slap you. I will find you. I will hit you with that ugly stick. I will hit you ten times. I will beat you upside the head. I'll just give you a water gun. I want a water cannon. A water cannon. I mean, let's get real. Let's play big. Tater cannon. Tater cannon. So anyhow, when you go through that parade and you're excited, guess what all the people on the edge of the <laughs> road are going to do? Well, the kids are going to try not to get run over by the trailer because they're getting candy. And the horse and friend are going to poop in the road. But the people stand on the side of the road, when they see High Country Cowboy Church for the first time, or maybe they've heard about it, and they see you, and you have a smile on your face, and you're excited to be there, guess what they just might want to do? Come check it out. Because why? Because you're an ambassador for Christ. <clears throat> He said in verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not either. I won't water down the truth. I won't sugarcoat it. I won't apologize for preaching what I preach. Amen. I know some people have been here 
and I watch them. I watch them squirm like their underwear is too tight. I'm watching in the seats. And when they, when they say, when we say amen, it's like, woo, who can get out the back door the quickest? Right? I mean, their hair is on fire sometimes. And I just go, oh, well, I'm not going to back down. I don't want you to back down. I'm not going to apologize for preaching this. I'm not going to apologize for telling you the truth. Whether you want to hear the truth or not, guess what you're going to get? The truth. Because Jesus said, I am the truth, and the truth will set you free. Not some phony lie. The truth will set you free. That's what we're getting. That's what this church is all about. High Country Cowboy Church, we write for the brand, do we not? Woo! Everything that we do in this church is about writing for the brand. You know, when you say you're writing for the brand, it's like saying it's my own special mark that says it's mine leave it alone this is mine leave it alone don't rewrite god's word leave it alone don't take what i have leave it alone do you know why those of us that are married if you have one wear wedding rings i have i'm gonna cut this one off not because i don't love this Karen, <laughs> but i don't want to lose my finger right i work with my hand but this is this is the first time in my whole adult life, well, I wouldn't have done as a kid, my whole life, that I've ever wore a wedding ring. I just wouldn't wear one. But that ring says, you know what that says? That says to the world that I'm hers. That says to the world, leave me alone. Even though there's plenty who try to not leave me alone. But the world, but that says, leave me alone. Same goes both ways. I committed to Miss Karen. Miss Karen committed to me. I committed to Jesus. Jesus had already committed to me. And so a brand can even be something when you think about your wedding ring or, or your commitment. You're saying, I'm theirs. Leave me alone. It's a brand. It's a mark. It's a, it's a, it's a place to say that this is where it is. Now, <clears throat> the Bible even depicts the church this way and Jesus this way as a marriage and Christ being the bridegroom. And when we write for the brand and we, we take on Christ, we're saying, I'm his. I serve him. He's mine. Together, we're going to go on to be with the Father in heaven. That's what it means to write for the brand. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 again, where it says there, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away and new things come. That's what it means to write for the brand. Now in Galatians chapter 6, verse 17, Paul says, I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Now there's a couple of things there that Paul's talking about, really. He's talking about, he's talking about his commitment to Jesus, but he's also talking about the the beatings and the whippings and the scars that were brought on him by man himself. Paul's never gave up. Paul never quit riding for the brand. Even when Paul was put in prison, he was still shared Jesus. And even while Paul was in prison, he helped, he helped jailers and other people come to accept Jesus and for them to, to ride for the brand. And, 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 and countless people would come and be baptized into Christ because of Paul's life. Paul didn't go to prison and give up. Paul went to prison. He's, it says they're in the dark and they're singing praises. They're singing songs and they're praying. And the other people in jail are going, they're listening, right? Because the other people there might be hopeless. They might think that this is it. That their life is toast. And yet Paul, he's sitting in the same jail and he's praising Jesus. You realize nobody can ever take your joy unless you give it away? Amen. Nobody. God put a joy in you. God put Christ in you. And nobody can ever take that unless you give it away. That's what, that's what it says in James chapter 1. Consider it all joy. You can't lose your joy. You can give your joy away, but you can't lose your joy. It's impossible. Amen. Can't be done. And so he says there, 
It's an acknowledgement of Christ's ownership. Now he goes on in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to say this. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's what it means to live for the brand, right? For the brand. God lives here. You know, we the, the, just like the word Christian is loosely used, so is the word church. Because you'll say, well, I'm going to the church. And people, people identify church with a building. The church is not a building. You are the church. Paul said, if two or more gather together, I'm there. The church is us. Christ indwells us. God, in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 38, it says, it says there that, that when they were buried with Christ in baptism, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What he's saying is, Christ is going to indwell you. This is where, this is where the Spirit lives. That Spirit came as a helper, an advocate. It came to help us in our weakness, because we're all weak. But Christ lives in you. If Christ is living in you, and the Bible talks about our body being a temple, why, how could you not be excited about that? Amen. Right? I think we need to be like that dancing chicken, really. And if y'all watched Pure Country, you know what I'm talking about. They would put a dancing chicken on the... It was just a burner, really, right? And they'd put that chicken up there, and it'd be doing the chicken thing. And some viewer behind the curtain was turning the fire up. And his feet started getting hot. And when his feet started getting hot, what'd that chicken do? Right? He's high-stepping it. I don't high-step too good anymore. <laughs> he was high-stepping it. Right? Maybe we need to be like that dancing chicken a little bit. We need to get our feet off the ground. Mary, we probably got to get our butt out of the pew. Right? And get out where the people are. Because that's what it means to ride for the brand. Now, I'm going to end right here with this one verse that I stumbled across this week that lit my fire up Ooh, sideways, backwards, and any ways you want to see it. I love... I love the book of Acts. But in the book of Acts, I stumbled across something this week that I thought was amazing. And I've probably read it before, but it didn't stick like it did this time. I'm going to end with this verse. Acts chapter 4, verses 27 through 31. I'll paraphrase some of that. But in Acts chapter 4, we're going to see we're going to see here a major difference between the Christians of the first century and the Christians of 2022. Over the years, we've kind of lost a few things. Over the years, we've kind of lost our enthusiasm. Some, this church has not. Have lost our zeal and our enthusiasm and have lost. But in the book of Acts, in chapter 4, there's something that happens here that we need so desperately that we need to be on our knees praying for. It. That we need to be fervently lifting each other, other up for it. Because there is a difference between those who wrote for the brand in the first century and those who wrote for the brand today. Begin in verse 27. <clears throat> For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus. Let me start that over. I think I might mess it up. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel. To do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. I think we're lacking some confidence today. What do you think? I think we're lacking, you know, here's the funny thing about confidence. I have been told about myself, which I laugh when they say it. I have been told that I'm an extremely arrogant person. 
And I laugh every time somebody tells me that. I said, well, you obviously have arrogance and confidence confused. Because I'll tell you what I'm not, or what I am, or what I'm not. I'm not arrogant. Because it's never, ever about me. It's always about someone else. It's always about Jesus. But what I am, and I will not apologize for it. I'm the most confident person you'll ever meet. Because I truly believe Philippians 4.13, where it says, I can I can't is not even a word that I understand because I know I can. When the doctor said I've never walked get, walk again, I said, watch me. When somebody tells me you can't do it, I go, hey, well, you guess what? <laughs> get in line. Confidence. You've got to have confidence. And if, you, if you're riding for the brand, how could you not have confidence, right? And so he says here, he says, Bob may, may speak your word with all confidence. This church and these people are praying. They are praying to be more confident. How many of us pray, well, Lord, I just hope you get me through this day. I hope you get me through lunch. And I hope you let me get home, take a nap. No, we ought to be on our knees going, God, you fill me with confidence. If they say, I can't, you just tell them, well, watch me. We're going to, we're going to do it, right? They prayed for confidence. Then it gets better. Wait, it's way better here. No. He said, the word with all confidence. Then in verse 30, it says this. And while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. This verse 31, highlight it, write it down, put it on your mirror, memorize this verse. And when they prayed, this is the first century Christians. When they prayed, those who wrote for the brand some 2000 years ago, when they prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. How many of us would love to feel the ground shake when we pray? Amen. How many of us would love to have the Spirit come over so strong and so so vivid that, that it would be undeniable that Jesus Christ was in our presence, that it would be undeniable that the Holy Spirit was here? I got news for you. He is here. But you know where he is for a lot of us? In our pocket or, or in a box or over here and not really let out. And these people, when they prayed, the, it said the ground shook. You understand how cool that is? We need some ground shaking going on. Do you not agree? When we pray, we got to go, God, I pray that you give me so much confidence that the ground itself will shake just because I walked across it. Not because of me, but because of the brand I write for. I, when I found out, I was like, I start flipping over the high hula, whatever in my back spot. Karen thought I had disease or was demon possessed or something. I don't know. When they had, I, I highlight, I wrote down, I was like, get this, I got to get this in me big time. It says, when they prayed, I'm reading again, I love it. When they had, it says, when they had prayed. Now they were, they were praying, but he's talking about something that already happened. When they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. I mean, I mean, you talk about earthquake stuff, right? The place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is why right here. And began to preach the word of God with boldness. Do we need some boldness in our life? Do we need some ground shaking in our life? You see, we've been given the gift that we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. If you've accepted Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. But I want to know, is your ground shaking when you're praying? And are you praying and coming out of that prayer going, woo! Be like Mark trying to run the out shoot gate. <laughs> now, if y'all know that deal, he got creamed by a bull. But if he was praying for some ground shaking and he had that confidence, you know what he could have done? <laughs> this is a bit cool. <laughs> Walk over to that bull and grab it by the horns, and I mean just bulldog it right there in the pen. <laughs> and go, told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what we should be doing to Satan? That bull is Satan. You got that, right? Yeah. That's, Satan had him pinned up against the wall. It was knocking the crap out of him. Okay? I didn't have a worker for three weeks. I was mad at that bull. <laughs> He go, my legs are all bruised. I can't walk. I said, get out, pick up and walk, man. This is like, where's your faith? And then he showed me, he pulled his pants, 
failed. <laughs> I don't need to tell that whole story. And his whole legs were bruised. I go, does that hurt? I'm just going to touch him. I go, does that hurt? And he goes, yeah. Well, get up and walk anyway. Right? But I mean, confidence to pray where the ground shakes. Come when that bull comes at you, which is really just safe. And I mean, grab that bugger by the horn. I don't care if he's 10. Some of you thought them cows that calved her up were 10,000 pounds. Right? We were. Uh, there you are. I was my ten thousand pound cow person. But if that's just Satan, and you got if you're praying and the ground shaking, and you got confidence, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna grab that bull, you're gonna get him by the horns, you're gonna flip him upside down and poke him in the nose. Why? Because you know who you're riding for, right? And you're riding for the brand. They prayed. For more boldness to preach with more boldness. There was no backing down, and as a result, lives were changed. As a result, people were saved. As a result, people were healed. And as a result, people were delivered. That's a whole other lesson I'm working on called deliverance. Satan binds us all the time and we don't even realize it. Our phones bind us. Our TV binds us. Our life that we live binds us. I'm here to tell you this morning, right to the brand. Know who you ride for. Do it without reproach because the world is looking to see what's wrong with you. And if they can't find something wrong with you, they might make some stuff up about you. But do it with all confidence, do it with all boldness, and do it knowing that you win. Go ahead and stand with me as we pray out. Now, in order to write for the brand, in order to write for the brand, you have to, have to, as of necessity, have great passion. I think we all understand what passion is. I'm going to pray today that as we pray that the ground beneath us shakens. But that shaking may not be a physical ground moving. The shaking that I'm going to pray for here in just a second is that God shakes your body. That God shakes you. Not physically shakes you, but shakes your mind and your soul that it gets you more fired up and more excited about Jesus Christ. Because that's what's most important in life. This is going to be an amazing week. People's lives are going to be changed. This next weekend, Miss Linda is going to Idaho to be part of the Coca-Cola Cowboy Church. What is that thing called? Coca-Lola. Coca-Lola. Coca something. Why can't they just get a simple name? <laughs> Anyhow, we'll pray for Miss Linda because I know that through her ministry and through her songs and through the things that she will do over there, lives will definitely be changed. And we're so blessed to have her and Rocky to be a part of this church as we are to have all of you. This week, I want you to understand what it means to ride for the brand. If you're struggling with anything, I don't want you to leave today without letting us pray with you. Letting us help you to understand what, who Jesus is and what he did for your life. You know, we don't normally traditionally do some fancy altar call but I want you to know you're not alone if you're struggling with whatever and don't leave if we can be a help to you Lord we pray right now we come to you as a body of believers on our knees with, with our hat in our hand in full humbleness Lord I'm praying for some ground shaking right now I'm praying that you use me. I'm praying that you use each person that's here this morning and those that are watching that aren't here. I want you to shake us up. I want you to, I want you to put a fire and a zeal in us like we have never seen. I want you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. I want you to, to cause us to be able to reach out and preach and, and share Jesus in, in, a, in, a, in a bold manner. Never apologizing, never backing down, never, never giving up but always going forward in the biggest way we can. Lord, I'm gonna pray for our church this week. 
There's a lot of things going to happen. I pray for the safety of our of our ranch rodeo team that that you would be with each person on that team, or actually be with all the people on all the teams, that you would keep them safe, that you would be not only with the contestants who ride, but with the livestock, that you would just pray that this would be a great week. But most importantly for us as a body of believers here, I pray that this is a week of changed lives, a week that we can reach out and, and share Jesus with other people. Last week I gave a challenge to this church for that very thing to happen. I've already heard back from, from many of the of the people they've contacted, the lives they've talked to this week about Jesus. That's an ongoing thing. Revival is not just a one-time deal that we did in the tent. This is a year of revival. It's a life of revival. It's a life of change. It's a life of putting Jesus first. It's a life that says, I ride for the brand, that brand being Jesus. But we thank you for each person that's here. We pray this week as we leave that we will <clears throat> represent you well and that we'll do so with great boldness and great confidence. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you want coffee and snacks, there's still coffee and snacks. Don't leave.